Hi, I'm Laura from SciTech. Welcome to the build stage of Tinker and Create Shadow Puppets. You should have your animal all planned out, ready to go. And this is what you're gonna need. Something to build your puppet out of, like some old cardboard from around the house. You're also gonna need something to cut with, like a pair of scissors. Gonna need something to stick with, like some tape or a glue gun, or even some blue tack. Uh, you're gonna need things to make joints out of, so some split pins, or some twine, or some wire, and also some of these pins are great as well. And something to support your puppet with, so some sticks from the garden, or some skewers. So with your planned out puppet, you're gonna to need to cut it out, stick it onto the cardboard, and then we're gonna draw the outlines on the cardboard and cut them out to build your actual puppet. Make sure you're sitting down when cutting, and if you need help, ask for an adult to help you. If you really liked your drawing, make sure you take a photo of it first because we are gonna cut it up. Now that I've got the outline cut out, I'm gonna to have to cut it into the sections we're going to use to make our puppet. So I'm gonna to have to chop the legs off and chop the trunk up. I'm also gonna number the different parts so that I know which part has come from where. You wanna leave the body whole because these, we're gonna add bits to them. And really, you could cut out the whole leg if you wanted to, um, it could happen either way. In fact, I might do that just for shape. Okay, so now we've got all the pieces. We're gonna stick it onto our cardboard so we can make outlines and make our actual puppet. I'm just gonna do that with blue tack. So I have stuck all the pieces onto the cardboard. Next, we have to make outlines. So obviously I don't need a huge hole there so I can just continue the body as normal. So obviously we are missing the tusks here. So what I can do is grab this and put our tusks back in. So I've drawn most of the outline of the legs but now I need to think about how I'm going to attach it. So I need to give it more, leave yourself more than you need so that if you want to, you can cut some off. Now we've got all our stencil parts. It means that if we make a mistake and need to do something again, or if we want to make a second one, we have all the pieces to do that. So make sure you put them somewhere safe. So this is my finished parts to build the puppet. I'm just going to check that I've got enough space for all of them for the joints I want to make. Now we've got to get cutting again. I like to make big cuts around it and then I go in for the details. All right, that is all the different parts. So now that we have all the parts cut out, we're going to make the joints. To do that, we're going to be using some map pins. And when you're using these, you want to make sure that you're poking downwards. So it's good to have a piece of cardboard or foam that you can poke into. Always make sure you're poking away from your body and try not to poke your hands or your eyes. I'm going to start with the legs. So you've got to think about whether you want the legs on the front or the back. I reckon on the back is gonna be good for this so that we can control it easier than if it was on the front. So when you think you've got it in the right place, push the pin in and then you can see what happens when you move it. Probably wanna cut off some of that thigh just so it looks a bit straighter. This stage can get a bit brutal. So I want the right front leg to not be attached to the left front leg. So think about that when you're making your joint. Yeah, so you can compare your or initial drawing to what your animal looks like. See if it's working. 
So again, getting a little bit too much leg coming out the back. So I might just snip some of that off. So that's the walking. And then we have the trunk. Normally the trunk's in between the tusks like this, right? Kind of like that. And it sort of sits up and have the whole trunk. But then, it's, then it'll just get stuck in between the tusks. So we'll put it behind. All right. So there are all our joints planned out. Now it's time to actually build the joints. So I've only made one hole in each of these because I've been pretty happy with where I've been putting the pins. But if you've tried several different places, it might be a good idea to get a pencil at this point and make a mark on the hole you want to use. I'm going to start with the legs. And for this kind of joint, I'm going to use the split pins. With your split pin, you're going to need a bigger hole than this, so you can work out a way to do that. A good way is with a hole punch. So to make the joint, once you've got your holes, you just put them together and then push your split pin apart. There you go. One moving leg. Testing as you go is very important because that's, that's how you fix it. Yep, we've got our legs working. So now time for our trunk. Because our legs are attached on the back, we want our trunk to also be controlled from the back. One part of our trunk. It goes both ways. Ah. So we've got our joints all set, so now it's time to attach the sticks. You could use sticks from outside, you could use skewers, you could even use pencils. The main thing though is to avoid hurting yourself on them. Uh, don't poke your fingers, don't poke your eyes, poke downwards if you need to do some poking. If you're going to use a glue gun, make sure you ask for an adult's help. Uh, you can also use blue tack or some tape. So for my trunk, I think I'm going to use a nice long stick. I'm also going to use quite a long stick just in the middle to hold the elephant up. So when you're using the tape, you want stability all the way around. And then you can add more wherever it needs support. All right. So I've got a stick just to hold my elephant up, but I'm not controlling any of the joints yet. Just got to hold it in place. So now that the glue has set on our trunk, I'm gonna add some skewers to the legs. So I'm just gonna use tape for these. You've got to decide where on the leg you want it to be to have the most control. I'm gonna go for the middle of the leg. So if you have enough blue tack, you can just use blue tack, but over time you need to keep squishing it down so it stays secure. So my puppet's almost ready to test. Come back to the next video when yours is too.